Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On today's tutorial, I'm going to paint a landscape with some mountains, some water and some trees. I'm using the app Procreate. I've opened an A4 canvas. And if you want to follow along, I've already created a color palette here. If you look in the description of this video, there is a link to my Patreon page and you can download this file for free. Otherwise, you can go to the value section of your colors within Procreate and you'll notice in the description, I've put down the different codes for each one of these colors type them in here, press enter, the color will appear up here, tap it into your own color palette and you can create your own version as well. In terms of the brushes I'm gonna be using, it's pretty simple. Within airbrushing, I'm gonna use the soft brush and the medium brush. And within the artistic brushes, I'm going to use this leatherwood brush, but I'm going to slightly change it. So I'll tap on it, I'll go to the grain and I'm just turning the scale of that grain down. It just gets rid of some of the texture within that shape. And I think I prefer it that way. Click done. So on layer one, I'm going to use my soft brush. I'm going to put it at around 15% and we'll have it on 100% opacity. And the first color we're going to use is the color here at the end, this first color on the top row. And you can see it is a grayed out version of this blue. And we're just going to place it a couple of times at the top, not too far into our A4 canvas, but you can see just a little bit. We're then going to go back to our colors, pick the second color along, at the bottom of that section, we're gonna do the same thing. Enter the third color, maybe reduce it this time to around 10%, and just at the bottom of that section, do another mark there. The next thing we're going to do is go to our adjustments, go to the Gaussian blur, we want to affect the whole layer, and we're just gonna blur it in to around the 40%, like that. A Little bit over, doesn't really matter. And we will come back to the sky and we will add quite a lot more texture into it, but we're gonna move forward with some of the landscape features first. So we're going to create another layer. We're gonna go back to our brushes. We're gonna choose a medium brush this time and we'll set it at around 3%. We'll keep it on the 100% opacity. We'll go to our colors. We'll skip the rest of the sky colors for now. We'll go to the first two colors on the second row. We'll go for this first blue. And I just want to start creating in this top left section, some kind of top of a mountain range. And we're gonna bring it all the way down onto this side, something like this. So we're gonna have the, the tallest bit on this side and then maybe a little bit of a rise over here as well. And if you want to just play around with the, the shapes here, you can get it specifically how you like it. And then what I'm going to do, just to get rid of all this white, is I'm gonna drag that color, let it fill, but you'll notice I've kept hold of the Apple Pencil on the screen and there's a blue slider at the top now. If I just slide it to the right, there was a little line where it hadn't quite filled it properly, but now it's gone. We'll come back to that layer a little later, but we'll create another one first. Go back to our colors. We'll stay on the same brush setting. So we'll leave that second color. We'll go to this third color along. And I'm just going to create another section. But we're gonna have it a slightly different shape. So where we had a dip, we're going to create a peak to fit in that area. Keep it quite rough, it doesn't really matter. We can get into the specifics of it later. If you wanna just add more texture and detail to it in a little while, we can do that, but we're just creating the overall shapes to begin with. So that will do for that overall shape. And again, we're gonna drag that color to fill into that area. And it's remembered the threshold setting that we had previously. we would taken it all the way up to 81%. And it's remembered that if you wanna take it a little bit further, you can, but if you take it too far, it just floods. So somewhere around the 90% and it's absolutely gonna be perfect now. And it remembers that for next time as well. We're gonna create another layer, go back to our colors. So I've used the first, the third. We're not gonna use the fifth, we're gonna go straight to the sixth the color in. So six from the left, third from the right. I will keep the brush settings the same as last time, but I'm gonna have something coming in from this side. You can see I've taken it all the way up there and I'm bringing it across. And I'll take it all the way across as well. What I'm gonna do on this side is I'm just gonna draw a line and hold it on the other end until it snaps into a straight line and I'm gonna start creating the horizon line. And then I'm just gonna drag and fill for that particular area as well. Now at this point, you can make a decision whether you feel you've got enough space in this part of the, the composition to fill in all the other things you want. Now I'm starting to realize I've not left myself enough room. So it's easy enough with digital to amend things. So you can go to layer two and let's have a look at that layer. We'll go to the transform tool. We can shift that around a little bit so we can move up into the canvas, but we can also, if we go into the freeform, 
we can squash it a little bit so we can simultaneously move it up and make it a thinner layer. Now I can do the same with layer three. So I can move it up a bit. You'll see now that I'm creating an area at the, the bottom. It isn't a problem, we can fill that in. I'm just gonna move some of these elements a little bit higher. And then I'll do the same with layer four. Again, we'll move it up a little bit, something like that. And I think that just gives us a healthier amount of space to actually do something with. Now, obviously we do have a gap there at the bottom now, but that's easy enough to fix if it, if it bothers you. We can go to one of the other layers, say layer three, go to our colors. And for that, we used color three as well, but we'll try it on layer two. We'll just fill in that gap. It doesn't really matter this, but if it's bothering you, there is still a line there. We'll deal with all that later on a, on a future layer. It's not a problem. So from the top layer, we're going to create another layer. We're going to go back to our colors. So the next two colors I'm going to use are these two colors. So I'll pick the darker color first. I'm going to stay on the medium brush, but I'm going to turn the size of it to 2% and the opacity to 60%. And I'm going to just start manually bringing this line across. Now I don't want it to snap to a straight line. I don't want this to be an absolutely perfect line, but I'm going to alternate between that dark color and this light color. Maybe turn the opacity down now to around 30%. I've done one rough line of the dark color, one rough line of the light color. I've turned the opacity down to 30% and I'm gonna put the sort of brush size up to 3%. I'm just gonna underneath, start to bring more of that light color in. And then I'll alternate again to the dark color. So we just wanted to create some texture, some banding for that area. So again, we'll go back to the light color. Maybe we'll reduce the size of the brush back down again to 2% and put it back up to 40%. Maybe just for an area over here to create a nice contrast with that dark area, we're just gonna start bringing in a bit more of that light color. And maybe from that side, we'll use more of the dark color. We want them to start mixing around that central point though. So we'll create yet another layer. We'll go back to our colors and we're going to start using this dark color plus the three different greens there that we've also got. So we'll use the dark color first just to put in the actual mass of land that we want. So again, on the medium brush, we've got it set to 3% and we'll put it at around 50% opacity. And in this gap, not quite at the top, we're gonna to leave an area there of a bit more water. But we're gonna have some land coming into this area around here. So we can make it a little bit thicker by going over it and we'll take some of this color over here. Now you'll probably notice with the brushes that I'm using for this tutorial, I'm not going to get heavily into textures. I'm just using some of the basic brushes that are within Procreate. However, if you want to create more interesting textures and experiment, then you might want to head over to Brush Galaxy. It's the first and only Procreate brushes subscription service. And I've had a look there and you can unlock access to over 20,000 premium Procreate brushes and save over 90%. So there are more than 12 different brush categories. So, so it has things like portrait pattern, texture and nature, many more, and actually save yourself a bit of time. So you can start a free trial starting today, unlock up to 12 premium Procreate brush packs worth up to $300 for free. Uh, there's a link in the video description and in the comments section at the top. So if you want to support this channel, it's a really good way of doing that. And at the same time, gaining yourself some really cool brushes. Like I say, I'm just putting in this mass over here. We're going to leave a water area here and a water area at the back. So we'll have a little bit that cuts in here, perhaps. Let's fill this in. We want to leave ourselves enough space for some trees to believably be able to grow in the center area. Perhaps we'll just create a little bit more mass there. We're just doing the dark colors first, then we'll go back in and put the lighter colors in. We're just after the overall shape. And likewise, with the tutorials that I do, we're after the overall effect. But if you want to zoom in, spend longer with it, experiment with those different texture brushes, then feel free to do that. I'll just get you to the point where you understand how to construct the image, but then you can play around with it and refine it as much as you want. Okay, so now that I've got my overall shape, I'm gonna go back to my colors. I'm gonna choose this fourth color in. It's a really yellowy kind of green. We're gonna put the size of the brush to 2% and the opacity down to 30% this time. 
and I'm just going to start bringing it in in areas from the edge over here a little bit keep it quite loose I'm only tapping and doing a little bit of light textured areas and then probably more of it over here as well so I'm keeping it really as quite long dashes really quite long lines but it's not going all the way across it's quite broken we can go back in and we can refine this again a little bit further I'm just pressing on lightly as it gets further down so it fades out I want that yellow to be a little bit stronger near the top section over there and you can see I'm leaving some gaps and some stripes for the darker tone to show through we'll go back to our colors we'll pick this next color so it's the middle of these three green colors so it's the third in from the right we're still on the medium brush we've still got it set to 2% and 30% opacity but I'll start bringing some of this color in now in addition to that other green so we can bring it into this area down here a bit further down and just have it mix with the the other green a little bit as well and let's go back to our colors so we do have a dark color this third green along and we'll just make sure we're on the lower end of 2% for this one so if you go down on the 2% it suddenly changes to 1 we want it just a nudge above that into the 2% and we'll put it up slightly to 40% opacity and I just want to perhaps exaggerate some of these stripes that cut through and I'm just going to increase it again actually back up to the top end of 2% and just maybe create an area of bushes over here that have a slightly different type of green we can disperse it around the whole area in fact the more kind of varied and textured this green it naturally will start to suggest things in that scene you don't need to specify exactly sometimes you can keep it quite loose and, and actually it does convey enough of that information anyway okay that will do for that layer we're going to create another layer so on this layer we're going to use these two colors at the end we've got a dark color and we've got a slightly lighter grayed out version we're going to start with the darker version we're going to go to our brushes and this is where we're going to use the artistic brush go to the leatherwood brush so we'll need to go down to about the two percent again and we'll just dial it back a little bit from the hundred percent we'll put it at around eighty percent opacity that's going to help us with the the tree textures so now that we've set that brush when we go back to it it's going to be absolutely right to create the tree trunks however we're going to go to the medium brush again turn it down to one percent size and it's currently set to 40 percent opacity and that will do but we just need to decide where to put our trees so i'm just going to do these lines to just to place our trees something like that that's going to give us the general layout of our trees and then probably what we need to do is just darken the tree trunks up a little bit especially at the bottom because they're going to be thicker they're going to be a little bit more defined in that area having said that we're going to cover it with quite a lot of foliage you're not really going to see much of it but you might just get a sense of it showing through gaps in foliage so you do need to have this line maybe a couple that are not really seen but they're in through the gaps there as well okay so that's going to be the tree trunks again we've already got the artistic brush set up with the leather leatherwood brush we have changed the grain down to zero before so we should be good to go so we'll pick one of our tallest trees and i'll zoom in a little bit and i'm just going to start moving left to right i'm just swinging the motion left to right as we move down so we get that kind of effect I'm allowing gaps to remain and I'm also allowing the, the direction of the branches to start moving more downwards. So initially they might be curling up slightly towards the top because they're not as heavy so they're going to be a bit more spring-like and grow upwards and then as the mass gets greater they're going to start being heavier and pointing more downwards as you go down. Now using this leatherwood brush really does speed things up it really makes it easier so I, I do like to keep things quite straightforward but often you will find other brushes by experimenting so do keep experimenting with different brushes you'll find things that work best for you perhaps and we'll do the same thing with this next one now I'm just keeping the 
the texture is slightly tighter. It might be that you have sections in your tree where there's not much foliage at all, so don't be afraid of leaving gaps. And it doesn't matter if our trees overlap, you're going to get areas where you just don't see through the, the trees at all and you won't see the background. And that's great. You don't have to go all the way down to the, the bottom of the tree trunk either. We'll try another one. We'll go for one over here. Perhaps this is going to generally just be quite dense at the top. And you don't see those kind of gaps because you're going to get a little bit of variety of types of trees and the, the way that they form as well. Something like this. And just repeat the process for the, the different trees, but try to change them up a little bit. If they're all exactly the same, then it's going to look pretty dull. So experiment a little bit. If it goes wrong, just try again with that particular tree, but vary up the, the width and the slight shapes. So it might be slightly more like a pear shape like that one, or it's going to be a long thin tree. Or well, it might be this one where it starts off thin at the top and then it gets thicker near the bottom section. Keeping this one quite sparse, so it's got quite a lot of gaps. This one maybe has more gaps at the top. Now we've got another tree here. I'm going to keep this one quite thick, quite dense. So I'm going to pack this all together so there's not many gaps for this particular tree. And again, little sense of things in the background. You don't need to exactly know what they are. I'm just going to put a few bits of texture for those as well. I might just decide to put another one there. So we'll go back to our airbrushing medium brush. Just by changing the, to that brush, it already remembers all the settings for that brush, which is great. Maybe we'll just put something here as well. Again, go back to the artistic brushes, the leatherwood. Again, it remembers all of the settings for us, which is really helpful. We'll just have a little something growing there. something growing there as well. So we go back to the medium brush and we just turn the size of that brush to the lower end of 2%. We'll keep it at 30% of opacity and we can just start around the base of these trees to create some broken texture. We'll keep moving it across and that's going to help create a sense that it's grounded, that it's creating shadows, that it's mixing with the other textures at the base of those trees. It's just hiding the very bottom of that, that shape. So we can do it with some dark texture to begin with and then we'll go in there with some lighter colours as well. So we're still on the tree layer. So we're going to go to this second colour that we had for the trees. We're not going to use this as much, but we'll go back to our artistic and leatherwood brush. We're going to set it to the lower end of that 2% and we'll put it down on the opacity to around 40%. And we're just carefully going to put in some more of that color just as an alternative in fact let's turn the opacity back up let's try that yeah we'll put it at 60 percent it's going to have an impact but we don't want it to be too dramatic and we're just going to start creating some extra textures amongst that dark color there now i recommend you do more of it at the very top we're keeping it broken so i'll just zoom in a little bit more so you can see that i'll put some in there i might leave gaps and then i have a little bit more some gaps and then a little bit more and you're just creating some, some sense that it's a bit more textured, a bit more 3D. But you don't want to totally obliterate that dark tone, you're just creating a little bit of a highlight on it as well. So it's more useful when there's a real dense area. So like this, you wouldn't need, need to put any on there really at all. But in these areas, where it's a little bit denser, just break up that dark area with some slight highlights, that's all. But not too much. So we've got the suggestion there, that will probably do. It's only a small effect in the larger scene anyway. What we'll do with that layer, because when you do zoom in, it looks really quite pixelated and specific, a bit too clear. So we'll go to the adjustments, we'll go to the Gaussian blur. We want to affect the whole tree layer and we're just going to blur it in slightly. Now, a slight amount is really what we want. So probably around the 1.5, click it again, zoom in, and it's just softened it a little bit, just so it doesn't look quite so jarring in the rest of the scene. And that works a bit better. Okay, it's time to start adding more detail into different parts of the scene now. So we're going to go back through our layers. So if we go back to layer one, that was the general color for the background sky area. And we're going to start adding some clouds into that scene. Now, if you're a bit nervous about working directly on that layer, then we'll just create another layer above that. So if they make any mistakes, then you can just isolate that layer anyway. 
So we're going to go back to our airbrushing. We're going to use the soft brush to start adding clouds now. Go back to our colors as well. So we used the one, two, three colors at the beginning, and now we're going to start using the next four colors. So we'll start with this color, and it is a slightly purple blue, but it is very grayed out. So with the soft brush, we're going to put it at the top end of 2%, but we're going to massively dial it back to around 25%. And what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start creating some little textured areas in the sky, some blobs. In fact, let's turn the size of that brush up a little bit. We're going to put it up to 3%, just over the threshold into the 3%. And I'm going to create some broken dappled texture for different parts of the sky. So you'll start to see the effect once it starts to build up. So I'm using a real tapping, a light tapping gesture with this. So I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see some areas where I've allowed it to create slightly bigger clumps and then smaller ones, but there's quite a lot of gap showing through. Now you don't want them all completely uniform, you want to vary it up a little bit. And as it comes over to this side, then they're going to start joining up as well. So as you come over to this area, we can actually increase the size of our brush to about 6% and we can just start filling it in a little bit more. We're going to completely obliterate the light colors in this area. We're going to get a really large mass of cloud. And we can have it blending in there. We'll bring it all the way across to this section and I'll just gently bring it in in that area too. And then we can bring it back down again to around the 3% and then in this break of cloud in this gap we can just start creating some of that broken texture again so we've got a variety of dapples of large mass of clouds and then it starts to fragment and break up again over here now it works better as an effect when you do have a, a large mass of it and then you start to see it breaking up in a certain area but not everywhere if you do it everywhere it's just going to look a little bit too much it might be you get almost stripes of it in places, but not too powerful, something like this. We're going to add other colors over the top as well, so this isn't the overall effect. We can just add a bit more at the top, perhaps. A bit more of it coming, stretching out from there. Now, we'll go back to our colors. We've got this third color in from the right, and we'll have a go with that color. So we're still on the 3% size. We'll create another layer and we'll start overlaying some dapples in this color as well. Now we're not trying to line them up, we're keeping them as a separate set of textures. So they'll go over the top, but they're not trying to line up with the earlier ones. And we can have it coming over to this area as well. Again, lightly just bringing in some dappled, some blobs. Keep your hand pretty light at this stage. We might have some areas where it starts to create streaks. So we'll zoom a little bit more, reduce the size of the brush to the 2%, and it's just going to hit the bottom edge of any of these dark streaks as well. And we'll create this next layer. Again, it's on top. We'll go to our lighter color this time. We'll keep it somewhere in the middle of the 2%. So you've got the top end and you've got the bottom end. We'll just put it somewhere in the middle but we'll turn the opacity of it down to about 15%. And we'll just gradually start suggesting that maybe it's picking up some real highlights in the cloud. As we approach the edges here, sometimes you can just get this light color and it doesn't need to be attached to anything. In fact, sometimes it's just highlighting the, the edge of a darker mass of cloud. Sometimes you'll just get wisps of the light color on its own. So again, we're just trying to build more of the color into this area because this is where the, the light's still being picked up by the, the sun that's disappearing. I'm just going to reduce that brush down a little further to the lower end of 2% now. Turn it back up opacity wise to about 30% and I'm just going to really allow it to exaggerate a highlight over in this section. Okay, I'm just going to add a hint more of it over there. So we really want to be slight with this. So we're going to put it to 10% and up to the top end of 2%. 
and I'm just going to introduce the, a hint of it more over here as well, but not much. In fact, the, the pink that we used earlier might be a little bit better for that. So let's go back a layer to layer nine again. We'll go for this more pink color, turn the brush size down to 2% and turn it up to 30% opacity. And I think I just want to create some slightly more precise little shapes of that pink, just in areas. Maybe just the odd little section that's come straight. And that's starting to build the, the overall effect of the sky, starting to make it look a little bit better. So you can keep working into this until you're satisfied with it, until you're happy with it. If you want to go back into your dark layer, go back to your first color, turn the size of the brush up. We'll keep it at the 30% opacity or thereabouts. Turn it up to like 5%. And if you want to just go in and just extend the impact of that a little bit further, it's then gonna start revealing more of that lighter texture that you have added. Might just turn it back down a little bit to 3% and start bringing in almost like in the background there, we've got a, a denser layer of darker cloud. And again, that really just helps bring forward the, the pink and the yellow. Play around anyway. So I'm gonna leave the sky like that for now. I'm gonna move on to some of the other textured elements. So looking through the layers, first mountain section that we had in the background was this layer two. So I'm on that layer and go back to my colors. So we've used that color, that was the main color we used for it, but we've got this slightly lighter color as well. So go back to my brushes, I use the medium brush. I'm gonna set it to 2% and 70% opacity. So it really should be just about noticeable. And I'm gonna do this section first because it's all part of the same area as that. And I'm just gonna use it to start breaking up that color a little bit. And now I'm not going to have it very precise. I'm not gonna get bogged down in detail. I'm just creating some slight variation in tone just to give it a bit more texture. Okay, so I've created some slight variation in color and texture there, but I'm not happy with that top edge. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna to go to my smudge tool. I click on it. I'm gonna choose the medium brush within the smudge tool. I'm gonna to have it at the lower end of 2%. I'm gonna put it down, let's just test this. That works about right. At the 70% strength for this. You call it opacity, but really it's, in terms of smudging, it is strength. And I'm just gonna go along the edge and just, if I zoom in a little bit, if I just push it up here and there, just a little bit, and just creating like a nibbled edge to that. And it's just given the sense that we've got trees perhaps growing in the distance on this area. Again, you don't need to go into any detail with this. It's just breaking up that line so it looks a bit more believable like that. And that's as much as we need to do for that particular area. We're on the same layer and I can perhaps just start to push some of these details around now we're getting higher up here, so we might not have as many trees. Could have some perhaps just fading out in this area. But when we get further up, they're not gonna be trees, but you could use it to start specifying the rock shapes that you want. Now I'm not gonna change it too much, to be honest. I'm just gonna do some slight adjustments, but not a great deal. We will go back to that second color again though, just in the same way as we did on that other area over there. And with this medium brush, we're gonna have it at 2%. I'm gonna turn it slightly down actually to around 60% because I'm gonna add two different tones to this. In the lower section, I'm gonna have some broken textures of this slightly lighter blue. Keep it quite loose, quite broken. And it's all starting to channel up towards the top. So I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit further to the lower end of 2%. I'm just starting to generally bring some of this texture heading towards the peak of that mountain in the area, in the distance but you'll see I'm leaving gaps of that color. I'm gonna have it more fragmented towards the top. I'll turn it back up again to the top end of 2% and you'll see I'm allowing it to gather together towards the bottom section of this area, clump together and we'll get more of this lighter tone. Next thing I'm going to do on the same layer, I'll go to the opposite end of the colors. I've got a color here and a color there. Now I'm gonna go for this lighter color. Now it's gonna be a lot lighter and this color is gonna be used for snow that's at the top of that particular mountain. So I'm gonna put it at the lower end of 2% and I'm gonna start with about 50% opacity. And I'm gonna put in some areas where snow is settled, where it's not melted, and you can see it really highlights, it really contrasts well with everything else. And we can just create a sense that there's snow settled up there and it hasn't disappeared. So it's gonna be clumped together 
almost like the opposite way around of what we've just created. So we're going to have bigger clumps at the top and then it fragments as it gets lower down. So towards the bottom, you're just going to have little areas perhaps where the snow hasn't completely disappeared. But as it gets further up, you're going to get bigger clumps where it all settles together. And then as it gets further down, we're going to get more and more fragmented, more and more broken. Just little pieces of that snow that's still clinging on. But the bigger clumps, like I say, are going to be more up in this higher area. Now we don't need to completely fill the mountain with snow. We can keep it quite sparse. It doesn't have to be too over the top. You decide what works best for your mountain range. I'm not going to do much more than that. I think I'm quite happy with that. Perhaps I could do just a little bit more here. But I don't want to go over the top with the effect. I think once it starts to look halfway believable, sometimes you just well just to leave it alone and let it work as a subtle detail. So that area and that area now are pretty much done. But we do have these other areas to deal with. So let's go through our layers again. So we've got layer two is finished. And now we're on layer three. Now I'm going to do exactly the same to the top edge of this layer that we did before. So we're going to go to our smudge tool and I'm going to zoom in. And we can just, you won't notice it much there, but we're just pushing it up slightly in areas and you'll start to see it more in this area. So we're creating some distant trees that are just breaking up that top edge. Don't do it too uniform, space them out sometimes. You don't want them as like a row of teeth. They want to be slightly more random than that. I'm just moving across. You won't notice it over here quite as much. But it's a, a de little detail that's perhaps worth adding anyway. So that's created a, a more believable top edge. So now we'll go back to our brushes. We'll go to our colours. So the first two colours were for the colours in the background. Now we're on these two colours. So the first colour here of these two, which is actually the third colour in, this is the main colour that we've used for that already. So we want to use this slightly lighter colour, which is now the fourth colour in. And if I show you, that is now going to be visible on that layer. I'm going to put it at the somewhere in the middle of 2% and we'll put it slightly lower on the opacity to around 30%. And I've just zoomed in a little bit. We don't want to go crazy with this. We just want to create some patches really. Some areas perhaps where the trees don't grow as much and we see almost some highlights showing through of bare bits of the mountain, the hillside, the underlying ground underneath the trees. So you want to be, again, sparing with it. You don't want to do it absolutely all over. You can see I've really concentrated in an area here, allowed it to almost become no texture, a little higher up, or just a couple of points. Maybe we could have a band that sweeps across here. Again, sometimes the, the slight suggestions work really well for us and you don't have to go over the top with them. So I'm going to turn the opacity down on this to 10%. I'm going to turn the brush size up to 3%. And I'm just going to gradually start building some more of this across as well. So that will do for that layer. Now I've really not gone into a lot of detail with that. Sometimes it's better to just be a little bit vague. Go back to our layers and we're on layer four now. So I'll just show you. So it's that one. So what I'm going to do with this layer is I'm going to do exactly the same as what we were doing before. We're using the smudge tool, but I'm going to slightly increase it higher on the 2% size and a bit stronger on the opacity up to 80 percent we'll just test that and that's going to allow me to create some slightly bigger spikes that look like trees that are a bit closer to us so i'm actually going to turn the opacity of up, that up even more to about 85 percent and just really turn the opacity or rather the size a little higher as well and then i'm just going to start creating more shapes that stick up And keep them quite random some are going to stick up and be really dramatic and other times there's not going to be much going on for a patch or we'll try it all the way across on the other side as well so it's the kind of detail you can work quite quickly with and just whack it in there really you don't need to be too precious i think i'm going to fade this side in however so i'm going to go to my eraser tool i'm going to go to the soft brush within the eraser. I'm going to put it up to around 5% and 
brush size within the eraser. I'm going to put it down to around 25% strength. And with this side, I want it to be closer here than it is there. So I'm just going to subdue it slightly over here. So I'm just having it fading it out. It just really helps blend it in with these areas over here. And then it, it clearly comes round and it's a bit more focused in this area. So I'm going to go to this second color from the right. I'm going to put it on the medium brush. I'm going to put the size at around the middle of 2%, but I'm going to keep it quite low on the opacity at around 15%. And I just want to create some texture that's in here, perhaps. I don't want to go overboard with this either. Perhaps there's just hints of it. A top edge of some trees. In fact, I'm going to turn the brush size up to 3%. I want to just keep it quite vague. It's a little bit too scribbly when I had it at the 2%. So we'll just create some noise in here, some broken textures. I don't want it to be completely flat. And we'll just go to this fourth color in now from the right. We'll have it at the 2%, but we're going to turn the opacity really quite low to around 10%. And just in some of these areas, I'm just going to start creating just some more spikes again. Now it's a subtle detail. In fact, it's a bit too subtle. So let's turn it back up to around 20%. And we'll just break up some of these areas with what could be the tops of trees. Could be a whole section here of, of things growing. So I'm going to use a combination of that and the smudge tool just to roughly get a texture in there. Now, if you want to spend time going in there and drawing the tops of layers and layers of layers of trees, then go ahead. OK, so we've dealt with the background pretty much at this point. And now we're going to start dealing with some of the land and the water reflections as well. Go back to our layers. The first thing I can deal with is the trees. So I can so I can slide that layer and duplicate it. Next thing I'm going to do is go to my transform tool. I'm then going to flip it vertically and then I can just move it down and create a reflection. So I'm just going to click out of that so I can move it around again. So I'm going to have it eating into the land, but I'm going to erase that first section of it. So almost like I want it reflecting from the point where it grows on the land rather than having it start where the water does like that. So now I can go back in with the eraser. It doesn't really matter what it's set to, but as long as you've got it precise enough, just to erase that section of the tree. Now we're going to do different things with that reflection or that part of the tree. For example, we can go to the adjustments. We can go to the Gaussian blur. In fact, let's not do that. Let's go to the motion blur instead. We'll affect the whole layer and we'll just blur that in slightly with the motion blur. So it gives you the sense that there's movement on the water. But we'll come back to that and we'll continue to create the effect that that's a genuine reflection a little later. The next thing we can do it starts to reflect all of the other elements. So we'll go back to the next important feature, which is layer four. We will duplicate that layer. Again, go to the transform tool, flip it horizontally, and we'll move it down. And you can't see it very easily on this side, but you can notice it over here where it's positioned. So you want it to create a mirror image roughly with that little green center of land being the center there. It's not going to be very impactful, this particular detail. It's mainly obscured by other things, but you are creating a dark section there, which if I just move it, you'll see it wasn't there until just now. So again, we'll line it up with that side as a guide like this. Again, we can go to the adjustments, probably go for the Gaussian blur this time, affect the whole layer and just blur it in a little bit, maybe about 3%. That'll do for that layer. Now, in order to do the reflection of the sky and other things, I'm going to have to start condensing some of those layers. So what I'm going to do with the sky is I'm going to condense all the first four layers. So if we go back down to these layers now, you'll see it's these first four. <clears throat> They're not called one, two, three and four, but they are all next to each other. So I'm going to pinch them all together. A bit awkward to do, but now you can see they're all one layer. I can duplicate that layer again. I can transform flip vertically and you can't see it because it's now underneath some of the mountain layers. So what we're probably going to have to do with that layer is move it up until we can see it. And I think the appropriate point where we can see it and it's having the desired effect is probably above layer three there. Now, having said that, now we've placed it. We don't necessarily want some of that elements up there. So on the eraser, we'll put it up to around 5% and we'll just erase some of the impact it's having up in there. We want it to be reflected in the water, but we don't want it to have that dramatic an effect. So we want just really an element of the sky because we've not reflected the mountains there yet. So 
we'll just erase the top section there so it's where we need it to be but we need to now reflect some of the other mountains too so the next thing we need to start reflecting are these sections of mountain here so we've got layer three so we can go into layer three now we've got a problem if we duplicate all of that layer i'll show you and then i'll flip it vertically you'll see that we've got a whole bottom section that's added there as well so we don't want to do that we don't need to duplicate that whole layer so we'll delete that we'll select layer three we'll go to the selection tool we'll choose a rectangle and we'll select the area of layer three that we want to mirror so you can see the bottom of that selection lined up here and it was just enough to cover that mountain area then we can three finger slide down we'll copy it three finger slide down again and we'll paste and now we've just got that section here as a separate element now i'm going to have to position it somewhere where it works now so we'll flip it vertically because it's going to be reflected and we'll move it down we can see from the top of that rectangle where it lines up with that little green bit of land which was our horizon line so we'll line it up with the horizon line and then what we're going to have to do with that separate element which you can't see because it's behind other things is move it up and so there now you can see it and that's working a little bit better for us now clearly there's another element there too which we need to deal with so let's go and find that layer so we've done layer three now we've got layer two so go onto that layer go to the selection tool use the rectangle we'll just drag the rectangle down to the horizon line which is that green strip just to cover that section and that section mainly three fingers down copy three fingers down paste we'll flip it vertically and again we've got this strange blue section at the top which we don't want and you can't see it because now it's underneath other elements so we do know we want to line the bottom of or sorry the top of that rectangle now with that horizon line there so we'll do that deselect and then we probably just need to move it up a layer or two to make it visible it needs to go above that sky layer doesn't it and there you go so that's created like a crystal clear reflection which we don't really want so i've got two layers now of those different mountain areas that are next to each other which is perfect because now i can just pinch them together so that layer which was a reflection of that and that layer which was a reflection of that so i can just pinch them together awkward to do but there you go now if i just deselect it you see it's the both sections of mountain range pinched together we'll move it up and we'll start to gather all the bit, bits of that reflection too so we've got that layer which is a duplicate of that section and now it's right next to it as well so we'll pinch it together again awkward to do so we'll just do that okay so now we've got all the mountain ranged pinched together it's all in one layer that's perfect for us so now what i'll do with that layer so we'll go to my adjustments my motion blur affect the whole layer and I'll just blur it in slightly to around the 30% in fact. In fact, let's put it, blur it in, slightly awkward to do, we'll put it at around the 40% or thereabouts. Now you can see it's slightly dragged it away from that end, not a problem, we'll just go to the smudge tool, put a brush size up, somewhere around 5%. It is actually set to medium brush and that's fine. Quite high opacity and we'll just push it across from that point. I'm going to go back to the top layers now so we're going to go to the it was actually layer six where the land was go back to my colors i'm going to use some of these lighter colors now so i'm going to choose the second color in with the medium brush put it at the lower end of two percent and put it at 25 percent opacity and i'm just going to start placing in some little bits of texture in fact i'm going to turn the opacity up to 40 percent just create some more texture some varieties of green i didn't use this use this green before so i'm going to start adding more of it in now go back to my colors use this dark green now turn the size of my brush up to three percent and just maybe create some clumps here just because this is essentially where the land meets the water now so you're going to get almost like a bank there Going to move to this really dark colour, turn it down slightly just to pick out and define. In fact, the opacity is too strong on that. Let's turn it down to around 15%. Just define some of the features in and around this land area. I don't really want to get too much into those kind of details, though it doesn't really matter to me. Um, but I am going to just exaggerate at 30% opacity and a reduced brush size just to 
further kind of blend in these trees with a dappled dark colour here. And just trying to get it to the point where it's, it looks refined enough and then we'll get onto the, the water reflections. Now I'm going to go to my lighter colour again. Again, I'm just creating slightly more broken texture, a bit more detail, a bit more refined. So you notice the texture. It's not going to necessarily look great if I zoom in too much for this. This is something perhaps where you need to experiment with your different brush types. I very much like to get you to the overall effect with these tutorials and then it's just a matter of you spending time fine tuning it to your heart's content. So you can see I'm just using this second colour in now just to continue to play with the highlights and using a combination of colours, creating more textures, create some highlights on these bushes in the distance perhaps, just on the top edge. And that will do for this land area. Look at our layers and you'll notice we've got a feature in the distance that was the green area. It's barely visible, but it is there. Which layer was that when we did it? It was layer five, wasn't it? Let's go to my darker colour for that background as well. Break it up a little bit. But that's too strong with the dark colour. Let's turn it down to 30% again. Add some little bits of texture in that distant area. Just a little bit, a hint of it. And that runs through there as well. Let's have a look where we're up to. So we're going to create another layer, but we're going to put it underneath the tree layers. And I've got the first colour selected that we had before. I'm going to put it on the medium brush and I'm going to put it at around the 2%, but 20% opacity. And I'm just going to start, in fact, that's way too small. Let's turn the size of the brush up. I think I accidentally moved that. So the top end of 2%. And we're just going to start bringing in this highlight color across. We can have it a little bit broken. But it goes behind the trees. Maybe it fades out a little bit. We could then try more of our pink color over here. So we're reflecting the colors that are in the sky, you'll see. We'll bring some of this pink in over here. Just be careful not to go over the land there. In fact, I've made a bit of a mistake, so let's just get rid of the bit where it interferes with the land. So let's just make sure we're sensitive to the, the fact that it goes right near the uh, a section of land. We don't want to overdo that. I go back to my blue color again. Just refine that a little bit more. So turn the size of that brush down a little bit. I'm just going to sharpen that up a little bit more just to create some splits perhaps. And then really what I need to do now is just create some ripples in this water. So this time I'm going to create a layer that goes on top of everything. So I've gone onto my tree layer, create another layer so it goes on top. I'll go to my soft brush, put it at around 3% and 30% opacity. And I'm just using the first color I had, starting to create some movements that perhaps cut across. Not too much. Something like this. And then I can also go to a slightly darker colour. Maybe this last colour at the top row. Turn the opacity really down for this though. To about 15% and lower end of 2% size. I'm just going to start creating some slightly darker things in there. I feel like I need to create more of a light sense here. There's quite a lot of light there and I think it needs to be have a bigger impact there. So I'm just going to go back to my reflection layers. So you just have to backtrack through to where have you found that mountain layer. And I feel like I want to use the smudge tool, put it up to about 7% and 70% opacity and just perhaps just twist that in a little bit, just get rid of it a little bit in this area. I feel like it's having too much power there. I want to get rid of it a little bit. So we create a bit more light in that scene. And then I'm gonna go back up my layers again, go to my lighter two colors. So the pink first, soft brush, put it at around 5%. 10% opacity, start bringing some more of this light into this area. I don't want to go over the edge of that land. I'm just bringing it in subtly to these areas and then I'll go to the light color as well. And start bringing it in. Now we've got a lighter color and go back to this darker color again, to that end color at the top row. Reduce the size of my brush to 2% and put it up to around 20% opacity and just start bringing in some slight streaks that cut across. 
maybe even reduce the size of the brush down to the lower end of 2%. Spend a little bit of time just getting some little uh, streaks across here. Add some extra noise. Feel free to spend as much time as you feel necessary to get this overall effect looking really good, something like that. The only thing we're really missing is the top or the bit of reflection on the land. I'm not gonna change another layer. I'm just gonna go straight in with this now. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm gonna select this color, which was the third in from there. And I'm just gonna create the slightly stronger opacity at 30%. I'm not changing my brush size, so it's in the bottom end of 2%. I'm just gonna create some reflections of the grass. You don't really notice it on the top, but you would notice it in the reflection. So I'm just going along here. Just creating a more believable sense that there is a reflection there. It's a minor detail, but it's one that perhaps should be there. And you can spend a little bit of time just going around, adding that kind of thing along there. If you've got a highlight there, you can always use the highlight colors as well, just to add a little bit of the highlight along that edge, something like that. Okay, I'm gonna leave this tutorial there at that point. I'm quite happy with the end result. If you've enjoyed following along or just watching, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification button to make sure that you are properly notified of future tutorials and I should catch you back here soon. See you later.